I was told um, that I was in a coma and on life support and that I was shot in the back of my head that night. They had to do a brain surgery to remove the bullet from my brain. And uh, that his, my ex fiance was the one who did it and he's been arrested. I was, um, necessary. to say, I was in, I was in complete disbelief and shock that um, he would do something like that to me, honestly. After I woke up, I remember that night too, I had um, actually, when everything was happening, like when I was being choked and everything, I remember even after waking up on the floor, I remember like praying to myself for um, everyone, like for my cats, for the kids, for everyone, and like basically like praying to be like, you know, forgiven and stuff like that, you know, that type of things, like that type of thing that you'd sometimes do at nighttime before bed, but I felt like I was, I literally felt like I was dying. <laughs> But of course, at that time, I had no clue what it was that was actually killing me until I woke up and they told me that I was shot. Um, he had shot me, um, like the angle was from like the top of my head and down. I'm mm -hmm. um, like the, primarily the right part of my brain. Mm -hmm. He had shot me. He actually tried to say that I shot myself initially when they when they got there but luckily they um yeah luckily uh forensic evidence and all that you know, pointed to the truth and that it wasn't there's was no way i could have shot myself there um and then um so i found out later also that from the time apparently from the time that a neighbor said that they heard the gunshot to the time that i had woken up and had managed to get that 911 call out. It had been 90 minutes. I was actually oh laying there for um, a whole hour and a half. And then there was no hope until I got the 911 call out. Because apparently, to my knowledge, no one else actually called 911, even though there was a neighbor that heard a gunshot. And I was actually the um, Arlo camera that caught, um, like some audio of the struggle. Cause as it turned out that night, I was charging one of our, one of his Arlo security cameras, like on, I was charging it on my end table, which was right by where I was when that struggle started. Um, at some point I ended up uh, bumping that apparently when, before I was shot and everything. And that was when they figured out that hour and a half time frame was, was because of that. Because apparently I must have bumped it when he got me up on the bed. Of course, it didn't record any video, but it got some of the audio because it's motion censored. And after all that happened, I had to learn how to do a lot of basic things over again. Like I had to learn how to... Uh, eat, holding you, like, um, eating utensils again. I had to uh, learn writing again, uh, typing, like typing on a keyboard. Um, I was in the hospital for roughly three weeks after I woke up, all learning how to walk again using a walker. When I went out of the hospital, I had to use a walker in order to walk before I could be discharged. And then after that, I uh, took months worth of speech therapy, physical therapy, and occupational therapy for roughly at least six months or more after the incident. I eventually got to where I could walk with the cane a number of uh, months later. Um, and then, um, now I'm to the point where I'm not quite as reliant on the cane as I once was before, thankfully. I um, started taking occupational therapy again, um, and I took it again recently in hopes of working on like my attention and the vision in regards to being able to drive again, hopefully, because I get to... Wow. Uh, driving again on June 4th for the 
driving, driving rehab thing, drive training. And hopefully I'll be able to pass it this time. The first time I, the first time I didn't pass it because of that um, peripheral vision issue on my left side. Like I was having, mm. apparently there was a time or two where I started to kind of go over the center line and that was a, that was a concern for them. So I had to, I've been doing, I did a lot of OT again in hopes of taking care of that. Um, I still, uh, I still can't type near as well as I used to. At one time I was able to type like 40 to 45 words per minute before this happened. And now, now I'd be lucky to probably get five. <laughs> I'm still, I still try, but it's, um, it's been a, been a struggle and I hope to eventually be able to ride my bike again. I haven't been successful with that yet. I still feel really like off balance when I try to try to ride the bike. So I don't know if I'll be able to ride it again. I'm hoping so though. Um, <clears throat> I still have, um, physically, I still have fragments of that bullet in my body. I have a fragment oh, wow. in my heart and a fragment in my lung because they figure that there is some fragments that, you know, when I, when it, um, was bouncing around like in my head like fragments broke off and got in like my bloodstream and like through like the nasal cavity i guess too and traveled down through um those two of those parts of my body um they did um many like uh, x-rays um around like the heart and my lung and stuff to make sure that those fragments weren't like moving or causing any physical issues to where they needed to like do surgery to remove them. But yeah, essentially pretty much the entire time, thankfully those fragments have stayed in the same spot. So they didn't have to uh, remove them because they figured that actually it probably would have do done actually more harm than good to remove them, especially like the one from my heart because then they would have had to do that. like, that would have been that would have been in like an open heart surgery, and so they um and they yeah. told me that by now, um there would likely have been extra tissue that would have grown over those fragments, so they're hmm. so thankfully um those have all stayed in place. I haven't had to do any more X rays of those because they've all stayed they stayed in the same place the entire time now since it happened. So. I'm lucky yeah. with that for sure. Um, and I have at least like three, what well, I was told, at least three metal plates in my head where my skull was damaged. Uh, I did have a blood clot in my head as well where I had to do um, those like, um, what you call it, those shots, like blood thinning shots. I had to do blood thinning shots in my belly oh, yeah. two times a day for the first year and in order to wow. like lessen that blood clot. And they kept, you know, doing x-rays to check on the status of that. And thankfully, um, thankfully um, I'm done with that now. And I took anti-seizure medicines up to that same time. And I never had a seizure, thankfully, so they took me off the anti-seizure medicine and I don't need to do those blood thinning shots anymore because that blood clot has been contained, thankfully. Um, so my vision isn't uh, still completely normal, but I've, I think I've been able to um, kind of accommodate that by just having, doing a lot of like vision training and a lot of attention training just to that by being trying to pay more attention to that left side essentially to make up for it yeah and then i still have um i still have some like light spots that like you know what those floaties they're called floaties i think i still often have floaties that are almost all all the time in my eyes so i notice little light spots that move around pretty often um, and then I still have a serious TBI from the gunshot that affected my memory. I, I've noticed especially my short-term memory, but a little bit with the long-term memory as well. And um, 
and I still have I still have issues sometimes with my attention and being able to keep my attention on one thing for very long. It's gotten better over like a routine and everything, but it's still um uh, I'll admit I still feel kind of like a I'm kind of like ADHD sometimes because of that. <laughs> uh, I'm still not back to driving or working yet. Um, I'm honestly not sure if I'll ever be able to work again. I've been trying to get disability, and which luckily I have um, my disability hearing on July 11th. So um, wow. hopefully that turns out to be favorable. And uh, I'll be able to get that. Um, let's see. So I've been, because I've been fighting the disability for over a year now. And um, yeah. I was denied three times before I got, I'm getting this hearing. So hopefully, I'm hoping for the best with this hearing. Like, uh, yeah. honestly, when it comes to the, another thing with the attention, like, Trying to do paperwork for disability was always, has been extremely confusing. Like, I literally couldn't do the paperwork. I needed a lot of help with, from my mom in order to do the paperwork because, like, I don't know, I guess the best way I can describe it, it just feels like kind of like test anxiety and trying to do, like, you know, the, even the shorter paperwork for a disability. And half the time, I just, I, had troubles thinking of what to even put on there, to be honest. <laughs> like, I have troubles thinking of, you know, things that should be, that would be important to put on there. <laughs> so, I need a lot of help from my mom and in order to do it, because otherwise I'd just, like, I would just blank out. Like, I just, my mom would just go blank. <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> so, everything physically, mentally, and emotionally is still... Definitely hard. Like, it's been a struggle anyway, but I'm lucky that I've been able to live with my dad and my three cats. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, honestly, I probably would have ended up homeless because I can't. I'm very reliant on, like, my dad and his income. Uh, yeah. And I see a counselor once a week still for my PTSD and still trying to heal from that and the emotional scars from that. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Because I'm, like, curious to know, what yeah. legally ever happened to your ex? Yeah, I'm actually, in fact, that's the part I'm getting to. <laughs> so, um, oh, so sorry. I went through the, I, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's all yeah, good. I'm wondering um, too. <laughs> <laughs> so I went through that whole trial and sentencing process and everything with him. He uh, he wanted a speedy trial, trial, thankfully, so I didn't have to wait too terribly long for it. Um, he was charged with attempted murder, willful injury with intent to cause serious bodily injury, and domestic assault. So throughout the trial, he literally showed like no remorse the entire time. And the judge mm. and everyone else recognized it that he could get with those charges of 36 years in prison and the mandatory minimum is uh, 17 and a half years he's gonna have to serve the 17 and a half years before he'll before there will, will be that possibility for parole at all thankfully his two kids are with his dad um, and are under his guardianship under Mark's guardianship and he was actually just recently certified by the state to be their guardian. So that's definitely a good thing. And there there was a, a permanency hearing as well regarding the kids. He actually just had that the other day. So he's still waiting to hear back on that, cause it, but it is sounding likely that Mark's probably going to adopt both of them, though. The mo neither of the moms have uh, they stepped up to be the moms that need to be for them. And um, Adam will be, thankfully, be in prison throughout their entire childhood because they're both going to be adults when he finally does get that 17 and a half years. That's awesome. Um, that's awesome. How do you feel about the sentence? Were you satisfied with the sentence or do you feel like it wasn't a sufficient sentence? 
Um, I'm not going to lie. I kind of wish that I kind of wish there was a life sentence for it, but yeah, I mean, same. <laughs> yeah, but um, at the same time, like, yeah, I recognize. Unfortunately, that's how the state of Iowa is. I guess there's no life sentence for attempted murder. So, but I'm I am at least satisfied that he got the maximum sentence, and um. And I'm also thankful that his dad lets me be a part of the kids' lives still. I still visit him. Oh, that's wonderful. Mark, uh, Mark works every other weekend, so I usually, it's about every other weekend when I can see them. Because my dad takes me over to visit them, since I can't drive still. So I'm I'm thankful for that. Adam, that doesn't mean Adam is try, hasn't tried to make it to where I can't see them. He's tried telling his dad that, you know, he doesn't want me to see them. But, of course, that's after, after that was exact, after I testified against him in court. Because before I testified against him, he, was, he told his dad he's finally being part of the kids' lives. But then, as soon as I testified against him and all that, that was when he changed the tune and decided he didn't want me to be part of the kids' lives. But... Luckily, like Mark recognizes that he well, he wants what's best for the kids, and both the kids want me to be a part of their lives. So he's um he's essentially just you know not telling Adam that I'm still part of the kids' lives <laughs> in order to you know because yeah. he doesn't want to want Adam to complain to him about it essentially. And since his rights haven't been you know severed yet, <laughs> since Adam's rights haven't been then. There's still that, but thankfully, thankfully, uh, Mark recognizes that, you know, it's beneficial for me to be a part of the kids' lives and lets me see them, despite what his son says. And, uh, but it's yeah, so he sees that. yeah, definitely. I'm, yeah, me and his dad get along pretty good and it's, it's, yeah, it's awesome because I mean, still to this day, the the kids' moms rarely see them. Like, I mean, since then, uh, Wesley's mom moved back to Iowa because only because of the fact that her her you know fiance or whatever over there broke up with her. Um, and then she moved back here, but she um, well, of course now after she now she's back, she does see Wesley. A little bit more often she sees him after she got back she started seeing him about roughly every other week to every three weeks something like that and so now she's here she actually kind of sees him more but the thing was before she rarely she rarely ever saw him before and it's funny like now um Actually, Mark even told me that the the lawyer, the Wesley's lawyer, asked Wesley if he wants to keep seeing his mom. And he actually told her no, <laughs> that he doesn't want to keep seeing his mom. Because <laughs> it's like, Smart well, kids. yeah, he is. He, re he recognizes she hasn't been there, <laughs> like at all. Yeah. So that that really, you know, something like that really makes an impression. Even Even though he was really young, you know, he's only five now. So... <laughs> He's still, he's yeah, still is like, kids are I don't not want stupid. <laughs> no, they're not. Actually, both the kids are pretty smart. Actually, sometimes I think they're too smart for their own good. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I love them though. I really do. I really love them. And, uh, yeah, I, no, I've definitely I'm really learned glad a they had a positive outcome. outcome. Yeah, me too. Like, well, I'm, I'm truly thankful for, you know, um, honestly, like everything, I was thankful for the EMTs and for all the people who saved my life. And for, I was also thankful for the awesome job that like the prosecutors did, um, for, you know, throughout the legal case and everything. And I'm just, I'm thankful I'm able to be a part of Mark and the kids' life still, because initially, when I found out what happened, I was really scared, honestly, because I was scared that I wasn't going to be able to see the kids again after that. Because I wasn't sure yeah. 
I wasn't sure initially how his dad was going to react or, you know, any of that. But I was definitely lucky. And you know, honestly, I mean, I learned yes, that were. over time that, yeah, I was definitely lucky to be alive. I mean, like, and even everyone in the hospital, like they said, everyone said I was a miracle to be alive still and to even be doing as well as I am now, honestly. Like, I mean, yeah. to, there have been other people who said that I could have just ended up being a vegetable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I literally could have. It's certainly, that could have happened. But thankfully, I'm not. I'm super thankful for that. Yeah. And if I've learned, if I haven't learned anything, I definitely learned that, yeah, it's um, definitely you do what you can to survive. Like, I... You knew the end there. I, I just, I fought to survive. I did what I could to try and seek help. <laughs> and I'm just, yeah. I'm definitely lucky that Adam did find that phone for me <laughs> and able to call 911. Because otherwise, I probably would be dead. <laughs> like, I, I know, I don't know like a whole lot, but I'm, I'm sure I lost a lot of blood from that. And, and I, I believe I ended up having yeah. to go through transfusions from it as well. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, and then I'm just, no, I'm just lucky as I was, uh, I was, I was just, you know, I was thinking about the kids the entire time. Like I was, I just kept thinking about and praying for the kids the entire time I thought I was going to die. So I was like, I'm, that was kind of my push, I think, to survive as well, just thinking about the kids and, you know, my cats mm -hmm. are reliant on me to survive, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I right, didn't, right. I wasn't going to go out without, without fighting to survive. And so, however I could, anyway. <laughs> but I definitely would uh, say, you know, for anyone, definitely try and seek help if you can, though. Like, do what you can to seek help. <laughs> I was in, I was just, yeah, I was unfortunate that I was kind of in the position that I'm not the biological mom of the kids. So I didn't have any rights to begin with to be able to do much to help the kids. That's, they were actually one of my biggest motivators for staying with Adam as long as I did because I was serious. I was scared for the kids and their well being because they didn't really have like, anyone else other than you know adam and the grandpa as in the moms like i mean i think the moms could have probably done more to try and get them out of the situation before but they didn't so i just right. i just felt like i needed to step up and do what i could to protect them you know what i mean yeah you probably felt, you stuck. Probably felt stuck yeah definitely uh, definitely I definitely did feel stuck, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Well, especially like, well, also like, I felt like I didn't really have anywhere to go either because like I had three cats and it's, it's sad how there are so many like rental places that don't allow you to even have cats without paying hundreds of dollars for them. Right. So, yeah, I yeah. just felt yeah. stuck. You definitely was, were definitely between a rock and a hard spot. Mm -hmm. I, you know what, how I, yeah. how I think of it, I think of my cats as my babies too. So, <laughs> you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to get rid of them. <laughs> Aw, that's <was> cute cat. <laughs> well, oh, tuxedo. You don't want to Why don't you look out? Meet Angel, our resident third co-host. <laughs> it's well, sad that you had to go through that, but I'm really thankful that you survived everything. Me too. And probably those kids, those kids helped. Yeah, definitely. They were, I mean, the kids and, and my cats, they really give me like a purpose to, they really gave yeah. me a purpose to be alive and to stay alive. That's yeah, they, they, they were your reason to fight. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Most, most definitely. I mean, <laughs> as, and I just, I love those kids so much, you know, like I'm not their biological mom, but I, I 
think of them as my kids, regardless. <laughs> Even though I'm not the biological I'm mom. Sure. But blood. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they they feel the same way about you as well. Yeah. They're always calling me, well, both of them, they always call me Mama Jen. <laughs> So, Aww. yeah, Sweet. I love that. Yeah, I love it. It makes me, it makes your heart melt when you hear that. <laughs> Ashley, did you have other questions you wanted to ask? No, she answered all my questions. So yeah, thank you, you so much for sharing your story. Oh, thank you so much. I was going to say the same thing. Me. This is a part of the program where we do our closing thoughts. So I'm going to kick it over to Ashley to send us out. Thank you for joining us and please remember to like, subscribe, and share. I am Ashley. And I'm Rob and this is Life Rewired.